let's take a look how Unity Physics compares to Godot. So we're gonna run Unity first and uh, let's start dropping some of those cubes. So we're getting to 100, 200, and the FPS is still pretty solid. We can see the time right here. We're still staying under 10 milliseconds, which is good. So we're already at 600, 700, and our FPS is still above 200. But there is some jumps right here, we can see. So it had some jumps already at 1000. We're seeing some jumps that go below 60 frames, which is above 16 milliseconds. So we can note that GPU is running about two milliseconds and the frame time, we can see that it goes around 10 now. 1400, we're already getting close to 60 frames a second. Now, if I just leave it without spawning any new cubes, the FPS is gonna increase because most of the cubes are gonna go into a sleep mode and most of the physics calculations are gonna stop. And as soon as I spawn some new cubes, we just get that huge spike. All the calculations of physics collisions between all the cubes start calculating. So that's how Unity behaves at 1500. So let's go and uh, check out Godot. Now for Godot, I'm going to run two physics engines. First, I'm going to run the default one that comes with Godot. So let's start spawning those cubes and I can spawn much faster here because by default those cubes don't fly like crazy if they are spawned on the same spot as another, which uh, Unity Physics does. So at 500 we already see that spike right there. It's really close to 60 FPS but it's below so 11 milliseconds of frame time and now getting to 600 we're seeing drops below 60 frames a second. Let's try to get to 1000, but it looks like uh, there's no point of actually going past at this point. So 600 is basically, I think, a cutoff point for the default physics engine, but where you can still spawn the cubes and have them collide between each other. One thing to keep in mind with this physics test is if you keep the cubes further away from each other and they don't actually collide, you can create more rigid bodies. The limit here is the fact that all these cubes are colliding with each other. So there's lots more calculation that go into play when I'm running it like this. And with Godot, just like with uh, Unity, if I don't spawn anything, the cubes also go into a sleep mode and the FPS increases. Now let's run Godot with Jolt Physics Engine. It's also a free physics engine that is available to or use with uh, Godot. And it was pretty simple to install and you just switch it in the settings and runs this one instead. So at 700, we're still running solid FPS at 200 frames. Don't see any jumps in the frame time above seven. So right now we got a jump to 16, which is 60 frames per second. So at 1000, we saw the first jump and I am spawning it much faster than I was in Unity. So I think there's a lot of cubes that are still not sleeping. At 1500 cubes, you probably noticed the frame rate drop, but let's try to spawn some more. And now you can see that as soon as I spawn at 1500, we get a 52 millisecond jump, which the jump is a little bit higher than in Unity. But again, uh, just like in Unity and in default game engine, whenever the objects go to sleep, the frame rate goes back up. In this test, you're basically testing how much object at the same time you can actually collide with and still calculate the collisions. So in most of the games, you'll never actually go to these limits of colliding with so much objects. Even the default physics engine with Godot actually would work for most of the games. But if you're looking to making some game that will be very heavy on physics and that will require collisions between a lot of shapes, then you're probably gonna use Unity ECS 
version of the physics and in Godot you'll probably have to go with something similar to that as well but again uh, that is only if you need that performance and you need all those collisions if you don't need that performance you can stick with the default ones and both engines are more than capable of running physics for most of the games now I'm gonna show a quick setup that I did so that if anyone has any questions about it so all I did was created a cube that had a box collider and a rigid body so I left the collision detection in Unity as discrete, so didn't modify here anything. And for the shader, so that rendering wouldn't affect as much of the performance, I created a very simple shader without any shadows. In Godot, I also did a similar thing. So I used a rigid body 3D node, and then inside here, just have a box shape collider with a cube mesh, also a very simple material attached to it. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, be sure to write those in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.